tool like Facebook Analytics is basically to help you beat these statistics and to help you with intelligent analytics so you can build a better product for the people that you try to serve. So before we get into a discussion about Facebook Analytics and what the tool has to offer, I wanted to walk you through a little bit of an evolution of the analytics space. Years ago, measurements started on the web. It was pretty rudimentary. The HTTP protocol was basically giving you a few metrics, and the measurement was centered around URLs. It was based on sessions, and most things relied on cookies. There are some products today that still rely on this type of infrastructure. And then, about 10 years ago, which makes me feel old, everything changed with the way mobile devices started growing. URLs and cookies don't actually make that much sense for mobile apps. This forced us to adopt a new way of measuring in these products. We shifted towards tracking user activity and transactions. In this second wave of analytics, you can think of a system that is based on events on one hand, and the other one, the devices where those events happened. In this second wave, where we've moved a little bit away from URL-centric measurement, we are still in a world where web and mobile measurement is siloed and pretty much separate. Now, traditional analytics um, tools measure in cookies and devices, measure these different platforms separately, but we know that people nowadays use multiple devices oftentimes to complete a single flow or a single transaction. So thanks to our reach and our identity graph, we can help you get a people-centric view of how these users interact with your businesses and help you combine all this information into a single place. This is something that Facebook Analytics already does today for mobile apps, for websites, as well as for bots. But in the recent past, Facebook has also become this important channel to do business. And if you don't capture how customers interact with you on Facebook as well, you're likely to lose a part of the picture. So for that reason, we have recently added support for Facebook pages. This is something that is still in beta, but it's open to everybody. And the reason we did this is to essentially allow you to understand the behavior and demographics of people who interact with your page's content on Facebook. This is interesting alone, but it's most powerful when you combine it with other data sources, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about, and combine the interactions people have with your content on Facebook with whatever happens on your app or your website, for example. If there's a single thing I'd like you to remember from this talk, except for my joke about Argentina, it's really that Facebook Analytics is an omni-channel solution. And the goal of Facebook Analytics is to give you the complete view of your customer journey, a view that goes across multiple channels, devices, and platforms. We think that this omni-channel approach is really exciting. It marks the beginnings of a third wave of analytics. It's a wave that is more people-centric as opposed to being based on devices and cookies. It's a wave that will support multiple platforms and multiple channels and allow you to combine all that information into one in a single place. And it's also a wave that will focus on new things, things like productivity, so you don't waste that much time looking for interesting insights, but those things are surfaced more automatically. And I will show you something that we're working on in that space. We believe that Facebook Analytics can help you adopt this people-centric view. And by taking this approach, we think that you'll get to learn your customers better and ultimately ser serve them better as well. So as a quick overview of Facebook Analytics before getting into a few of the features, Facebook Analytics is a tool designed to help you grow by better, un better understanding who your customers are and how they interact with your business. It's a tool that's entirely free to use no matter how much data you send. Whether you have an app, um, a website, a bot on Messenger, or a combination of platforms, Facebook Analytics is a tool that helps you combine all that information by leveraging our identity graph of over 2 billion people and helps you understand how people go from a channel to another, for example. And then one thing that's important to point out is that Facebook Analytics is a standalone product. So even though it's integrated with other parts of Facebook, you do not need an ad account or a Facebook page or even using Facebook login to be able to benefit from this product. You also don't need that much to get started with Facebook Analytics. The first step is basically to install the SDK we have on iOS and Android 
If you have a website, you can use our JavaScript SDK or leverage the Facebook pixel. If some of you are already advertisers on Facebook, there's a chance you don't need to implement anything new to actually get started on Facebook Analytics. The second step is really simply to start logging events. And I'm going to go into events in a few details in a second. So before we dig into events and then some of the features that events unlock, I want to talk about a few of the ways you have to feed data into Facebook Analytics. So we already know that millions of websites use our JavaScript SDK on the web to do things like Facebook login or sharing. That same SDK can allow you to log events for Facebook Analytics. On top of that, we also know that millions of advertisers use our Facebook pixel to run ads on Facebook. The good news about that is that we built this in a way that allows you to leverage the implementation you already have with Facebook Pixel and benefit from Facebook Analytics without having to do anything. And then if you have things like a website and a mobile app or a bot and you want to combine all those things, we built this vehicle that we call Event Source Group that is essentially a one-time mapping that you can do to combine your Pixel with your app, for example, and create this new omnichannel dashboard that will give you insights that go across those different platforms. What you see back here is a list of the key features of Facebook Analytics. We're not going to go through every single one of them, but I'll try to focus on the most important ones, and I will start with events. Events are the actions people take in your app or website. I'll walk you through an example in a second, but I want to stress that events are really the backbone of everything else you're going to do in Analytics. Passing the right events to the tool with the right parameters to make sure that you capture the data that matters to you that then helps you unlock interesting insights is going to be key. What you see here is a few examples of events you could log. You could log an event when people add something to their cart, make a purchase, send the message, perform a search, and so on and so forth. These events can be logged, as I said earlier, on the web, on mobile, as well as on Messenger. We typically recommend logging events for all the key actions people take within your product, and I'll go into that in more detail with an example and then some best practices about how to think about which events to log. The example you see here is a typical example of a commerce product. So if we imagine we have a commerce app, we would be able to log an event that is content view. With this event, content view, we could also log custom parameters to give more information about whatever is being viewed by the user. In this case, you have the type of content, which is going to be a shirt, you also have an ID, an ID for that item. You have a description. In this case, it's an Oxford shirt. You could have the currency, the price of that shirt, and so on and so forth. What's interesting if you start passing all this information is that you'll be able to break out this event and those parameters in Facebook Analytics to view different reports like which type of shirt is viewed the most, which one is the one that drives the most revenue, and so on and so forth. So in order to log the right events, this is kind of the way we recommend the partners we work with to think about it. We recommend you to think about this and to identify the single most important action for your business. For this example, I'm just going to take purchase. Assuming that you sell something, this is really what you're trying to optimize for ultimately. And of course, log that as an event. But then from that most important um, action that you log, work backwards to log all the different actions that lead to that key outcome or key action that you've defined. For the purchase event, that could be things like searching, adding something to cart, adding your payment credentials, and so on and so forth. So for each key step of that journey that leads to this key action that you've defined, we recommend you to log an event, and then of course log the appropriate parameters for each one of those events. There's one thing that I want to mention as well, is that I've said that Facebook Analytics is entirely free. It's also very permissive when it comes to logging a lot of events. There is no limit on the volume of events that you can pass. You can log up to 1,000 distinct events that each can carry up to 25 parameters in addition to all the things that we log automatically for you. So it's really a way to make sure you can capture all the data that matters for your business and then integrate that into reports and visualizations and different insights. One of the most interesting features of Facebook Analytics is going to be demographic information. This is as well as measure how each segment of people that you get to define um, are doing on a specific sequence or a specific part of your product. 
What you see here is a section in Facebook Analytics that is dedicated to demographics, but you will also see in the tool that demographics are present throughout pretty much every report that you'll be able to look at. And one of those places where demographics is also prominent and is useful is segments. So I will walk you through many of the different features of Facebook Analytics and hopefully tell you a little bit about how you can use that and how you can, you can get value out of this tool for your business. Segments are filters that can help you answer questions about the characteristics of a specific group of people. And you are the one who defines that group of people. So what you see here is an example of a segment that I created. You can create segments based on different conditions, like the events that you log, or demographic information that the tool provides automatically, and many other informations. These segments can be applied on other reports of Facebook Analytics, such as funnels, cohorts, lifetime value reports, and so on. And it can basically help you understand how a specific group of people is doing when it comes to a specific metric. The example we have here is creating a segment of people who have performed more than two page views and are in a certain city, for example. This is a very basic example, but you can think of segments as this playground where you can create all sorts of segments based on a combination of the data that you log and the data that we provide, so events and demographics, and make all of that come together to create groups of users that make sense. Another thing that's important to mention about segments is that these can be leveraged to create custom audiences and run ads on Facebook. So if you use segments to identify a group of people that is particularly valuable to you, you can leverage that segment to turn it into an audience to either create a lookalike audience or retarget people directly if the segment that you created was about people dropping off a funnel, for example. So Music Match, um, Music Match which is a partner that we work with in Europe, used segments to better understand what drove engagement in their app. So they noticed significant retention rates, differences in retention rates for different segments of people. The one thing that they noticed, for example, is that people who use a certain feature called floating lyrics that basically lets you see the lyrics of the song above, like while you're listening to the song in the app, had a lot better retention than anyone else in the app. So what they did with, this, with that insight is basically updating their onboarding experience to get more people to try to opt into this feature, and the results were immediate. Like they got an over 20% increase in retention rate for those people who actually opted in to this floating lyrics feature. Facebook Analytics also includes funnels. These funnels are going to help you track conversions, and each step of the funnels that you'll be able to create are going to be based on events, which is also why it's really important to log the right events and all the events that your business cares about. This is what the funnels report looks like. You can use these funnels to track the most important sequences that happen within your product. That can be things like an onboarding flow for the first time someone um, launches your app, as well as a purchase funnel on a commerce site, for example. Now, because Facebook Analytics lets you easily combine multiple channels and multiple platforms, you can create funnels like this one that start on a platform and end on another. For example, if you have a mobile app and a website, and you're interested in knowing how many people install your app and then end up completing a purchase on the web, as long as you're logging data on both of these channels separately, you can combine them with an event source group and then very easily create a funnel that will give you the conversion rate across those platforms. So in this case, we had a funnel of people who installed your app, then visited your website and, and, perform, and had a purchase, for example. Treatwell is another example of a partner we work with in Europe that used funnel to improve conversion through retargeting, actually. So it's a mix of using the funnel reports, the segments that I showed earlier, and Facebook ads. What they notice, noted was that when they looked at their conversion funnel and they looked at it per platform, they saw that there was a huge drop on Android specifically from people searching for products, adding to cart, and then purchasing. So they created campaigns targeting Android users directly who searched but did not add anything to cart, and by that they were able to improve the conversion rate of that specific funnel by 5% for all Android users. So another thing to note is that you can use funnels to also understand the impact of the campaigns you create because once you run a campaign, you can then use that as a segment to look at the conversion rate for people that you've actually acquired on Facebook. 
Facebook Analytics is also a tool that can help you with retention. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this, ta this talk, retention is extremely important and sometimes a report that is actually quite overlooked. Retention charts will basically help you understand how many people come back to your product, whether that's an app or a website. Retention these charts measures how many people come back after first use. So you can look at the average retention rate for a certain period of time. You can also look at individual cohorts, like people who have joined on this specific day, how did they come back or not over time. Facebook Analytics will show you cohorts on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. We build um, cohorts automatically for you for retention, but you can also create cohorts with custom events that you log. There's also other ways to look at these two to be able to understand lifetime value, for example, which is something that we've recently added to the product that we're getting really good feedback on. So if you want to understand either how people come back to your product or how people's purchase behavior evolves over time, using cohorts for retention and lifetime value are the reports that you want to go to. This is the last feature I want to talk about to leave you with a few tips and a great camera presentation. This relates to what I mentioned earlier about productivity and how we think that we can do a lot more to help you use your time wisely and focus on the insights and taking action on those insights as opposed to spending hours and hours looking for those. So this is a feature that we call automated insights. It's something that we launched at F8 last year, our annual developer conference, and it's in beta now. It requires no additional setup as long as you are already set up on Facebook Analytics on either your app or the web. So for apps and pixels that have over 10,000 daily active users, you should be able to see a, a, a list of cards at the top of the overview screen that give you insights in a way that is ranked by our machine learning models about things we think may be interesting for your business. So you can use this to understand different segments of users and get a sense of the different engagement levels of different groups of people. In this example, we have automatically generated a pretty simple insights that shows you how a specific app version comes back more or less often than the rest of your user base. You will have insights like this one generated for things like gender, as well as age, geography-related insights, and we're adding more insights related to events and so on. So this is our first tab add helping you being more productive when you're in an analytics tool. So instead of having to dig for all these insights, we hope that we can surface some of them automatically. And we're investing more in this um, going forward as well. So you can focus on analyzing the insights once they were already found for you and then taking action, whether that is by looking into the product and seeing if something needs to be improved for that segment of people or leveraging a segment that does really well and running ads on Facebook to find more people like those. So there are already over a million apps, websites, and bots that have used Facebook Analytics. I really enc encourage you to give it a try. It's a tool that's completely free, but most importantly, it's a tool that will help you adopt this people-based approach and hopefully get the same types of results that we get when we look at um, the way our products work more holistically and how people interact with our brand and business all around those different ch devices and channels. So I will leave you with a few tips on what to focus on. I hope that this is both useful for people who haven't used Facebook Analytics yet, as well as like a good reminder for people who have tried the tool before. The first one is make sure that you are logging events of all the different key actions people take with your app or your website. This is really, really important. As I mentioned earlier, it's oftentimes useful to start with the key action and work back from there to log additional events that lead to that key action. The second one, is build funnels to understand how your various flows on mobile and on web are actually performing. Don't forget here to use a lot of the segmentation tools that we have to layer in things like demographic information to try to identify opportunities for uh, conversion rate improvements, for example. Third, take a look at cohorts, not only for retention, but also for lifetime value. This is something that's really important if you want to build a long-lasting business. Of course, the cost of acquisition of, of your users is important and how many active users you have is, is the most high-level metric you could look at. But looking at retention and digging into the value that those people are actually driving to your business over time is something I'd encourage you to look at in Facebook Analytics. Fourth, once you started measuring those things and analyzing this, 
you can take different actions. Using segments to take those actions is the way to go. Whether those actions are improving a funnel for a specific language that has a worse conversion rate, for example, or taking your top 10% of users in terms of purchase value and running ads with lookalike audiences on Facebook, those are the actions that will help your business thrive. And Segments is really a great tool to be able to identify which pockets of users can help you get there. And then finally, we have a lot of documentation online. We're going to be here at office hours. Um, you can come. I'll try to answer in Spanish. It will be terrible. But we have a lot of things online. We have great documentation. We have onboarding guides. We have FAQs and all that stuff to help you really get started and get the most out of this product. So to get started on analytics, you can simply visit analytics.facebook.com. Come see me afterwards. We'll be here pretty much all afternoon. Our website, as I mentioned, has a lot of documentation for each one of the platforms that you may be interested in, as well as how to combine everything. So I'd encourage you to take a look and get started with Omnichannel Analytics. Thank you very much. Gracias, Matías. Eh, algo que dijo Matías que es muy cierto es que en Facebook nosotros usamos la medición como un eje fundamental de todo lo que hacemos. Para básicamente todas las decisiones de producto que tomamos. Algo que nos llevó eh, este enfoque en la medición es notar una tendencia contundente e incremental en el uso de la realidad aumentada como una forma en la que las personas se comunican tanto para expresar cosas que suceden en su vida y en su alrededor, tanto, y, y también para consumir contenido. Eh, creemos que esta tendencia continuará hasta volverse algo tan común como quizá hoy lo es un mensaje de texto. Por eso mismo invertimos y creamos la primera plataforma de realidad aumentada que está abierta para cualquier creador, desarrollador o diseñador que, que quiera incursionar con ella. Inicialmente lanzamos la la plataforma en F8 en abril del año pasado, eh, que es nuestra conferencia anual para desarrolladores. Eh, la lanzamos públicamente, salió de beta en diciembre de este año y queremos platicarles exactamente qué es, cómo la pueden aprovechar y algunos casos de uso que espero que echen a andar unas ideas. Para eso nos acompaña Chris Barber, él es la cabeza del equipo de alianzas de la Camera Effects Platform de Facebook y nos, nos platicará un poco de cuál es lo último que hay en esta plataforma. Bienvenido, Chris. Buenos días. Uh, me llamo es Chris. <ríe> uh, uh, yo hablo español un poquito. That's about it. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to talk to you all about the CameraFX platform. So before we start to talk about the CameraFX platform, let's talk about the camera. I will ask one more time if everyone could pull out their mobile devices, and this time open up the Facebook app. I see some people pulling it out. Okay, in the Facebook app, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a camera icon. So when I talk about the camera, this is what I'm referring to. It's a camera that lives inside of the Facebook app for nearly all of the two plus billion people who are using the Facebook app around the world. You may recall at our annual developers conference last year, F8, our CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced to the world that we are making the camera the first augmented reality platform. Now let's talk a little bit about what this means. Of course, there are other augmented reality platforms and technology uh, uh, capabilities available. But what's most significant about this statement is that we are focused on the camera. And why are we focused on the camera? Well, we believe that augmented reality has a long-term future. And we believe that the form factor through which people engage with augmented reality will likely be one that lives on our faces. Imagine a world that's alive and rich with content everywhere you look. And you don't need to pull out a phone. You just simply look through a device that's attached to your face. Well, we're a few, maybe many years away from this future. However, 
we believe that we need to build the platform that will bring the content for this future into the world today. And that's why we're focused on the camera. And what the camera enables is mobile AR. So the ability for the first time <laughs> for people to bring augmentation into their world and make it accessible and always available to them and their friends. Because of the reach of the family of apps, the Facebook family of apps, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and WhatsApp, we're uniquely positioned to bring cameras into the hands of individuals all around the world, and inside of those cameras, make augmented reality a possibility today. So, you may be asking yourselves, well, what's possible with this augmented reality platform that Facebook has built? So let's take a look at some examples. Before we do that, we'll touch on some of the underlying technology. So, we have a tool that is called the AR Studio. The AR Studio is a free, publicly available tool, and that is where you and anyone that you're working with to develop augmented reality experiences will do your work. Inside of AR Studio, there are a number of capabilities that are enabled. First, there's tracking. So, augmented reality could be described, can be described as the ability to place virtual content in the space between me and the world. What that requires is that the camera is knowledgeable about what it's looking at. It has context for what it's looking at. And ultimately, it can associate virtual content with the things it's looking at. We call that tracking. So, we've enabled two types of tracking in AR Studio. First, face tracking, which, not surprisingly, refers to faces. And the second is world tracking, which refers to the world around us. We have numerous other tracking capabilities that we're working on and that you will start to see come to the platform very soon. Imagine other parts of the body and other objects in the world around us. But in addition to the tracking capabilities, which are the core options that tell your effect to do certain things, you can also integrate data, either live data that's happening, uh, that's being sourced from activity in the world in real time, or data that you have available to you through some other storage mechanism. We'll look at some examples of this in a moment. Of course, we also enable 3D rendering, so the ability to place 3D objects into the world, onto bodies, and have those render uh, in a high fidelity, high impact, high quality way directly in the mobile devices uh, that people are carrying around. You can build effects for both the front or selfie facing camera, as well as the back or world view camera. You can detect device motion, so you can have an effect that's reactive to the way that I'm moving my device. You can trigger audio inside of an effect. So as an example, in the Woody Woodpecker effect we just looked at, when the mouth opens, the ha 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 audio triggers. <laughs> you can enable hashtag voting in the context of a live broadcast because, oh yeah, camera effects also work in the live camera. So imagine I'm broadcasting live and Alonzo is my friend and viewing me and he sends in hashtag cat and suddenly there's a cat on top of my head. And finally, we enable a variety of gestures beyond just uh, facial uh, emotional gestures uh, such as touch interactivity. So uh, you can build I uh, interactive narratives in your effects that allow people to go from one step to another using the touch of their finger. So now some examples. We'll first focus on the tracking capabilities. So as I mentioned, uh, we enable face tracking, which of course is a part of a larger umbrella of tracking capabilities related to people. All of the body parts that we all have can and should be recognized by a camera, and we're diligently working to deliver that. 
But first we focused on faces because, well, we're Facebook. <laughs> so for people tracking, I'm going to show you a few examples. <laughs> Some you'll recognize the IP, Pokemon Company, the Lego Ninjago movie, and of course, a fan favorite, Stranger Things. With each of these examples, oh, with each of these examples, what's important to note is that they're leveraging the key elements of our, uh, our people tracking technology. There's a face mesh, and then there are materials that have been applied to the face mesh, textures and materials, 3D art. A few other examples of how face tracking or people tracking can be leveraged. In the example here on the left, this is from a creator called Dankland. They built an effect that they called a meme generator. And what you see here is that it's not a mask over my face, it's a frame around my face. And the content at the top is randomly generated by the effect. Remember, we spoke about networking capabilities. So when I tap that screen, the phrase at the top would switch from when you realize nothing is real to something else that's funny and amusing and gives me the opportunity to create a personal meme to share with my friends. This next one might be recognizable. Our friends at HBO made a spectacular effect for Game of Thrones, which enables you to become the character, the infamous character, the Night King. What's very interesting about that experience is not only that you can apply a mask and become the Night King, but you probably saw that it started out with a view of just me. That transition from real world to virtual world is very important. What we've found is that people don't want to share something that looks like everything else that their friends are sharing. So giving people the ability for their real face, their real personality to come through in the effect is very important. Next example is from the television network ABC in the States. Uh, they launched this effect to promote the premiere of their uh, TV show, The Good Doctor. I particularly like this effect because not only is it fun and entertaining, it's educational. You'll see that by tapping the screen, you can transition from one body system, in this example, the skeletal system, to the uh, circulatory system, and over to the respiratory system. Again, all through the tap of my finger. Another example here is technology we've developed called lip sync. So in case you haven't noticed, that is not a picture of me at the end. That is a poster that is hanging on the walls in our office. But it was a great way for me to give an example of this effect. I'll let it play and then tell you about it. So what's going on here is this lip sync technology recognizes any mouth that it's pointed at and automatically replaces that mouth with an animated mouth that says or sings anything that it's programmed to. Okay, so that covers uh, our people AR technology and some examples of how folks are using it. Again, I'll note that we're not only focused on faces, so as you're starting to come up with ideas, please think about all the other parts of the body. I'll put a special plug in for hands, which are coming very soon. Now we'll transition to talking about world effects. And again, this is the ability to put uh, augmented content or virtual content into the world around me. Now, to put content into the world, if you refer back to our conversation around tracking, that means that the camera needs to recognize something and be able to track against it. And so the very first world tracking capability we've enabled is called plane tracking. It's the ability for the camera to recognize horizontal planes, flat surfaces, and to track against them. So some examples. First, from our friends at Universal Pictures for their upcoming film, Jurassic World, they created an effect that brings the Velociraptor directly into your home. 
For me, that's on top of my meditation cushion where I spend a lot of time. Also, our friends at Supercell, a game development company, made an effect for the game Clash of Clans, which lets you bring the character the Builder into the real world. And you see I placed him on top of a building because he's the Builder. And finally, uh, the gaming company Blizzard developed an effect for the game Diablo, which lets you put skeletons right into the world around you as though they're living in your environment or not living. Okay. So that covers broadly our tracking capabilities. But as you'll recall, there was a whole list of other features within the platform. So I'd now like to show you some examples, some use cases for how you can bring the tracking capabilities together with these unique platform features to create uh, uh, exciting and compelling experiences. First, I'll talk about effect navigation. So I described that touch is an element that you can bring into an effect to enable people to kind of take a journey in your effect. Well, one way that we've seen touch used very effectively is to interlink related effects. So in the example that I'll show first for the film Justice League, there are five Justice League heroes, and it was important to Warner Brothers, pic Warner Brothers Pictures to be able to represent all of the heroes together because they're better together. So first, you see me as Wonder Woman. I tap the screen, and then you'll see it invokes a menu, and suddenly I've now chosen to become Aquaman. Another example of this is, again, Lego and Ninjago, and I have the ability to switch from the blue Lego Ninja to the brown Lego Ninja to the yellow Lego Ninja, etc. I also want to note on this example that while it seems as though there is a whole different environment behind me, this is really enabled simply by recognizing where my face is and then placing art in relation to my face. So you can create experiences that have a tremendous amount of depth. The last example here for touch interaction is, uh, was made for the film My Little Pony. And there were two pony effects that were created, and the creator wanted to give people the ability to switch from one to the other. Thank you for allowing me to be the model for all of these examples, by the way. I appreciate it. Okay. The next feature that I'll highlight is the inclusion of data. So we talked about the networking capabilities in the platform. Well, here are some fantastic examples. The first two are leveraging real-time data, meaning activity that's happening out in the real world that's changing moment by moment is being networked in to the effect. So the first one is a football match between Manchester United and Real Madrid. And you'll see, as soon as there's a goal scored in the match, the effect responds. The scoreboard at the top changes, there's a celebration, and you'll also see when the camera is flipped around to the world view, there's a statistics board, which includes real-time stats from that match. Similarly, the Major League Baseball in the States created an effect for each of the 30 teams in their league. This one is the Milwaukee Brewers. You see, I'm wearing a headset so that I can become the broadcaster and tell my friends how I feel about the, the game that's going on but they also have included the scoreboard at the top and a stats board in the outward view. The final example is not real-time data necessarily, but it's a very clever use of data networking in an effect. So this was created by Pedigree, who make dog food. Uh, and at one level, the effect is quite simply a way for me to put on the mask of a dog and to share that content with my friends. I think they actually had four or five breeds of dogs you could select. But what made this effect even more interesting and compelling and innovative is the way that they use data. So, I'm a dog. Now, I invoke this search experience. And using tap, I enter my postal code so that the effect knows my location. I click find my dog, which sends my postal code off to the network, and suddenly, the effect returns to me a dog that's available for adoption immediately in my area. 
So again, a very, very innovative use of augmented reality that goes far beyond the use case of sharing and expression and starts to get into the space of utility, which we believe will be a significant use case for augmented reality in the future. Now I'd like to talk about the inclusion of music because everything's better with music. Here are a few examples uh, that come from uh, a, a range of industries that leverage music. So the first was Netflix, who had uh, a documentary for uh, Lady Gaga, and they made an effect, and when you open your mouth, not only do flowers come from your body, but also a Lady Gaga tune plays in the background. Not sure why it's not playing here, but it does. Uh, the next example was made with Atlantic Records for uh, an artist who will be familiar to all of us, I'm sure. So, we worked with them to create an effect for Bruno Mars that enables you to recreate the music video for this song. Those of you familiar know that the music video has exactly the same types of animations. So it's the ability to uh, bring a music video into a user-generated content context. The next example is from Fox Television, which is another television network in the States. And they have a show very popular called Empire. And that show features a lot of music. So they chose one of the songs from the show and built out a karaoke effect that lets you sing along. The lyrics appear at the bottom of the screen, you sing along, and you wear the fun headset branded for the show. Cool. All right, the next feature I'd like to highlight is uh, actually a combination of features that enable a use case that we believe particularly strongly in. And that is in effect gameplay. This is the very, very early days of this type of, of use case, but we're quite excited about where it can go in the future. Probably everyone in the room has heard of Pokemon Go. Well, Pokemon Go is a uh, gameplay that happens in the context of augmented reality. It also, of course, uh, leans strongly on location, and that is an area of significant investment for us as well. So imagine a future in which the examples I'll now show you not only leverage face tracking, as you'll see, but also take advantage of the camera knowing where you are in the world and where you are specifically in this room. So, First, you'll see, again, just using face tracking and mouth opening as a trigger, you can put something into the mouth and score points. Another example is an outward view. This was developed by a developer, a creator in Taiwan. They put these fun donuts into the world, and when you tap on a donut, you're surprised and delighted by uh, the birth of a little character. Next, uh, a developer uh, built a sushi eating effect. So this is my colleague Guanan, who is, uh, is the model in this example. And you'll see that simply by leveraging mouth openness as an instruction in the effect, which again is a part of our scripting, the modules are self-serve in AR Studio, so you don't really need to know JavaScript at all to use one of these modules, mouth openness being one of them. As soon as the mouth opens, the content flies towards it. The last one doesn't utilize the mouth or touch. It utilizes another body part. I am fortunate enough that I have quite large eyebrows, so this one was easy for me. You'll see that in this experience, there will be objects floating down from the top of the screen, and when they get close to my eyebrows, I'll be able to catch them <laughs> or miss them, as the case might be, and score points along the way. So again, imagine a future, a very short-term future, in which not only will you be able to leverage face tracking to create these gamified experiences, but other body part tracking, as well as world tracking, including location. So, 
Now, hopefully everyone in the room is very excited and already thinking about the effects that you're gonna make for the camera, right? You're also likely asking, well, once I make an effect, how do people find out about it? How do people use it? There are a few means. The first is your effect will appear directly in the camera. So everyone who opened up the camera before, you will have seen in the bottom left an icon that looks like a star. That's where effects live. When you click on that star that opens up a tray, 